While the world argued over budgets and stealth, one tiny jet quietly changed everything. It happened over the frozen airspace of northern Canada, a sky that belongs to no one, yet defines everyone who dares to patrol it. What started as a simple demonstration flight turned into a moment that no one in Ottawa, Washington, or Stockholm will forget. Because the Saab Gripen E, the jet everyone dismissed as too small, too simple, or too Swedish, just proved it could do what billion-dollar fighters struggle with in real-world Arctic conditions. And the shockwave it sent through Canada's defense circles might change the balance of air power in the north. To understand how we got here, you have to go back a few years, to a time when Canada's fighter fleet was running on borrowed time. For decades, the Royal Canadian Air Force has flown CF-18 Hornets. Reliable, yes, but they were built for a different century. One before satellite warfare, before stealth, before the frozen Arctic became a global battleground. So, when Canada launched its long-awaited competition to replace them, it became one of the biggest fighter jet races on Earth. The United States entered with the F-35, the poster child of modern air power, sleek and stealthy, dripping with tech. Europe brought the Typhoon and Rafale. Boeing offered the Super Hornet, and then came Sweden. A small, neutral country known for calm politics, clean energy, and IKEA. Not exactly the place you'd expect to challenge American air dominance. But Sweden's Saab didn't come to play the same game. It came to rewrite the rules. When Saab announced that its Gripen E would compete for Canada's skies, experts laughed. A budget jet from a small Nordic nation, going head-to-head -head with the F-35? Impossible. They said the Gripen didn't have stealth, didn't have super crews didn't have the political muscle to win a NATO deal. But Saab wasn't trying to win with politics. It was trying to win with logic, because while other jets were built for show, designed for wars that might never happen, the Gripen was built for wars you actually have to fight. It was light, it was agile. It could take off from a snowy road, refuel from a truck, and be back in the air in 10 minutes. And that's when Canada, a country with more snow than roads, started to pay attention. Still, Few believed the Gripen could actually outperform the world's most expensive fighter. Until the demonstration. It was supposed to be routine. A cross-country Gripen E-flight in Canadian airspace. Saab called it a demonstration of cold weather capability. But what happened in those skies over the Arctic Circle turned into something much bigger. The Gripen E, equipped with its advanced Arexis electronic warfare system, performed beyond expectations. Even in frigid high-latitude conditions, where GPS falters and radar behaves unpredictably, the Gripen sensors and systems adapted perfectly. Observers noticed something unusual. While American-built jets often required ground crews and hangar support to prep for Arctic operations, the Gripen needed almost none. It was refueled and turned around on a makeshift strip in minutes. Pilots watching the demo described it as effortless. And then came the moment everyone talked about. During a simulated intercept drill, the Gripen's radar detected, tracked, and engaged a mock target long before the F-35 on a parallel exercise flight could react. No stealth tricks, no billion-dollar networks, just software, sensors, and smart design. One Canadian pilot summed it up quietly, it just worked! In a region where failure means frostbite and lost sovereignty, it just worked might be the most powerful compliment you can get. That day changed the tone of Canada's fighter debate. Because this wasn't theory anymore. This was proof. Proof that the Gripen E could handle Canada's unique mission. Defending a massive icy frontier with limited infrastructure, under extreme weather, and without depending on anyone else's permission or parts. While the F-35 dazzled with its stealth and data fusion, it also came with an invisible leash. U.S. software control, mandatory upgrades, and costs that ballooned with every flight hour. The Gripen. It was freedom in flight form. Saab had offered full technology transfer, meaning Canada could build, maintain, and modify its fleet independently. That offer, paired with this stunning Arctic performance, made many in the Royal Canadian Air Force wonder if the world's smartest jet had just proven itself in their own backyard. News of the demonstration spread fast, and quietly shook defense circles across NATO. In Sweden, officials called it a validation of their smart power approach, brains over budgets. In Brazil, 
already flying its own Grippens, engineers celebrated saying, we told you so. And in Canada, the questions began, had Ottawa chosen the right path by locking in the F-35, or had it traded independence for prestige? Even some US allies started re-evaluating their own choices. If a small Scandinavian jet could outperform expectations in the harshest airspace on Earth, maybe the old assumptions about size, stealth, and cost were due for a rewrite. Finland looked again at its defense mix. Eastern European Air Forces requested new Gripen trials, and analysts began to use a phrase that Saab had been waiting to hear for years, cost-effective superiority. Because that's what the Gripen E represents, not just a fighter, but a new philosophy of warfare, a jet that fights smarter, not harder, that values independence over image, and that proves, once again, that intelligence, not intimidation, defines true air power. It's almost poetic. In the same sky where Cold War giants once tested nuclear bombers, a small Swedish fighter quietly reminded everyone what modern air combat is really about. Not politics, not prestige, but purpose. The Gripen E's demo didn't rely on stealth or brute force. It relied on understanding the mission, on solving problems that billion-dollar programs ignored. It didn't need a perfect hangar or a massive logistics chain. It just needed a runway, or sometimes just a highway. That's not just engineering. That's philosophy turned into metal. And for Canada, a country that prides itself on resilience, independence, and ingenuity, that philosophy hit home. The official story will say that Canada chose the F-35. That's true, on paper. But in the minds of pilots, analysts, and defense thinkers who watch that demonstration, something changed. Because for the first time, they saw what it looks like when a small country outthinks the superpowers. They saw a fighter jet that didn't need to hide because it understood how to survive. They saw a machine designed not for show, but for sovereignty. And as the Gripen E roared back into the clouds over the Canadian Arctic, the meaning was clear. You don't need to be the biggest to dominate the skies. You just need to be the smartest. While others built complexity, Sweden built clarity. While others built dependence, Sweden built freedom. And that's why this one demonstration, quiet, efficient, and utterly shocking, just changed everything. Because in a sky full of giants, it was the smallest jet that made them all look up.